you are looking at Sobel's brand new SV08. It's really good, but it's not perfect. And uh, you're gonna wanna see this. And make sure you watch through to the end because I'm going to go over the things I like, the things I don't like, and then I'll share who I think this machine is for and whether or not I think it's a good buy or not. Now, if you've already made up your mind about this machine, then you might want to act quickly. Sobel's special pricing on this machine is incredible and the spots are limited. So I'll have a link on the screen and in the description, but uh, good luck, go get one. All right, and back to the machine for those of you who are here and haven't made up your mind yet. There is a lot to cover and I know a lot of you are excited, so let's just get right into the details. For all intents and purposes, you are looking at a 350 millimeter Voron 2.4 without all the time and tinkering needed to get good prints. You are getting a 700 millimeter per second capable speed demon shipped right to your front door that is ready to go from boxed to printing in about an hour. And I'm not kidding, not exaggerating. It was about 58 minutes for me. And that was with me taking my time and really kind of enjoying the process. Ultimately, you get all of the benefits of an open source Core XY machine that is infinitely upgradable without investing the thousands of dollars and the dozens of hours required uh, to assemble and tune. Sovel is merging the tinkers and the non-tinkers, which is not easy to do. And ultimately, I think both of you groups will be very happy with a machine like this in your workspace. Now. Is Sobel the first company to do it? Nah, absolutely not. But it appears that Sobel has executed this, I think, better than anyone else, at least that I'm aware of. And I also think better than a lot of people expect it. There's been some naysayers out there about these mass-produced uh, boron machines. Now, if you've binged all the content out there about this particular machine, understand that I can only give you my thoughts and experience with the machine that I have here in the studio on my bench. And you've heard me say this before, but I make it a point not to carry the baggage of other content creators. So I can give you my thoughts unimpeded without the concern uh, for motivations or bias of others. In short, I really don't care what other people think. I just wanna give you my honest experience. Also, I know this is a bit controversial, but do you think machines like this will have an impact on the Voron industry in whole? Now, seriously, I wanna know what you think. So drop a comment below and I expect hundreds, if not thousands of comments, and uh, your comments could determine if we do a follow-up video on this. Now, the first thing that you notice when looking at this machine is that it is not made up of 3D printed parts. These are all machined and injection molded components. Now, looking closely at the machine, it's obvious that building a mass production Voron isn't a quick process. This was a long time in the making. In fact, the details of this machine were shared with me last year, and uh, it's been beta testers hands for quite a long time. Assembling the machine starts with a fully assembled and wired base that comes nice and square from the factory and ready to receive the corner pieces and top plate. This method of assembly guarantees that you start with a truly square platform to build from, which is pretty important. The corners come beautifully machined and pre-wired. Oh, and I'm not sure who is influencing who, but uh, ever since Comgro merged with Sowell, I am loving the aesthetic. Look at the build quality and styling of the Comgro T300, and now look at the styling here on the corner of the SV08. Very similar, heavy duty, and I think it looks pretty good. I like it a lot, actually. The top is a single machined aluminum cap that locks the corners uh, together. It's pretty light, but very rigid. And I guess it's gonna ensure that the machine is square, so a square top and a square base. Also, there are threaded holes all around the sides and up on top uh, for the optional enclosure. I think that's gonna be a huge selling point actually. I think a lot of people are gonna be looking at this machine and, uh, and enclosing it. The gantry is a quad Z motor design that uses damping motors to keep the gantry level and to keep it from falling if it loses power. Now, it also means that you get that sweet quad gantry leveling system, right? So it's like, you can do it in every direction. Simple to install, uh, just fit it in kind of at an angle and then uh, two bolts in each corner lock it into place. I keep smacking this filament in a bad spot. Now, one of the features that I really like is that it uses CAMP for mesh leveling. So if you aren't familiar with what CAMP is, it's an adaptive mesh leveling technology where it only makes leveling adjustments where the print will be. So if you're printing something small in the center, that's just where it's gonna do the mesh uh, measurements. Along with the induction auto leveling, which works very well, by the way, it has auto Z offset. It does that here in the back. And uh, we'll be touching more on that in just a moment. 
It's using a proprietary or custom ceramic cartridge style hot end with a maximum temperature of 300 C and it has an AC powered heat bed with a maximum temperature of 100 C. That's the classic 300 100 combo that we see a lot. The build plate is 350 millimeters squared with a Z height of 345 millimeters, so just a little bit shy. And the build plate itself is a flexible PEI coated sheet with a medium rough texture. Now, the interface on this is a standard or classic click wheel, and I'm usually pretty apathetic about interfaces on physical machines, especially for those that can be managed remotely. But for this machine, I kind of felt like the whole thing feels more premium and I think it could have had a better interface actually. Like I would have loved to seen like a big five or six inch touch interface. That's my preference. Which does bring me um, to the side of the machine over here. And uh, that's where we'll find an HDMI port and that's actually where you can add an external display or interface, which is pretty awesome. And we'll touch more on that later in a separate video. We have a whole thing dedicated to it. It's gonna be kind of fun. So make sure you're subscribed, do it. Click subscribe and like, thumbs up. On the side here, right there, uh, we have next to the HDMI port, we have also two USB type A ports and ethernet. Now it also has Wi-Fi and it's got that kind of quirky Wi-Fi uh, configuration where you gotta put your password and information in the file that's on the USB key and put it in there. I think that's always kind of wonky, but that's how it's done on this machine. Now, as for slicing, you fans of Orca Slicer, you will be happy to know that there are Orca Slicer profiles from day one. Now, I was provided some default kind of profiles for Orca Slicer when I picked up the machine, and I had to make some custom adjustments like speed, jerk, temperature, and other settings uh, to make it work the way I wanted to. Um, I think that they were a little bit lacking in the default uh, profile department, but that information has all been passed off to uh, Sovol and Sovol's working on them. So I am positive that by the time you get this machine in your hands, you will have some fantastic profiles for a slew of filament types and brands. Of course, it uses Clipper firmware, right, for speed. And that means that you're gonna get that standard Clipper remote management web interface, which means you're obviously going to be able to manage it from a web browser. And also you get that sweet camera mounted there under the gantry, which is kind of cool. Okay, so now that we've covered most of the features, let's talk about the good points, the things that I kind of really like about the machine. First, if you are a proponent of open source, then you will be thrilled to know of Sobel's commitment to open source for the entire machine, right? As well as their support for the Voron design team. And that with every purchase of the SV08, Sobel will be making a donation. In fact, did you know that Sobel has already done a pre-donation, right? Ahead of sales to show their commitment. Pretty cool. Another thing that I really like was the assembly. It's just really good. And it's almost exactly an hour from start to finish and it can be done by novices or experts, so don't worry. And you can tell that Sovol has invested a lot of time and money into this process to give users the best chance at success. In fact, I think the assembly process would be fun as a family activity. Parents, go grab your kids and go through the assembly with them. Um, it's gonna be simple enough for them to understand and they'll learn a ton along the way. The build quality on the SV-08 is fantastic. It's heavy. Um, it actually has a cool little handle on each side that's engineered in the base, uh, makes moving it a lot easier. I love that because here in the studio, we move printers a ton. So I guess that's a good feature for us, but I'm sure you'll find it handy too. The custom extrusions and machine components really give it a premium feel. I kind of mentioned that before. And the cable management is really nice with uh, as much wiring as possible, cleanly locked into the extrusions and out of the way. Last, the cooling is just really good. It's loud but when you move a lot of air, that's expected. So overhangs and bridging has been great. So props to Sovol on getting cooling right. Now let's talk a little bit about the bad. The manual is great. One of the better assembly manuals that I've ever seen, but everything was great until I got to about page 13. And in those steps on that one page, there was about 12 different items um, that needed to be connected in the wiring. Now, for those of you who are experienced, I don't really think this is a big deal, but for beginners, um, it might be a bit overwhelming. And my advice for you would be to just slow down, uh, work through each of the little sections one at a time on that page, and a recommendation for Sovol would be to break that page out into several pages um, with the proper graphics and, and uh, verbiage to get people to understand exactly what they're connecting and why. Okay, next, the spool holder. Um, it's just bad. It didn't work for me. Look at this. It's just cheap, really cheap. Every time I used it, 
it unspooled over the edges of the spool. It tangled probably a good four or five times in a row. And so I ended up just removing it completely, putting it here on the bench, and I used a Prusa Mini spool holder. And I, I have lots of them laying around. And I'll even include a link in the description below. You can go and print these in some PETG and uh, with some, I don't know, skateboard bearings. What are those, 608s? And uh, print it yourself and have a much better spool holder, one that's just not gonna cause print failures. And another negative is the power supply fan. And I know other creators had mentioned this before and I confirmed that I validated it's loud, like annoyingly loud. Um, it had a bit of a whistle to it in the beginning, but that seems to have, have faded over time. Not quite sure why. Um, but it's definitely not a machine for those of you who might be sensitive to fan noise. And uh, it also seems to not be as loud if I lift up the machine on one side. So likely it's some sort of restriction uh, with the air. I imagine put it on some taller feet, um, let more air under it, cut out the, the fan shroud, do something. All right, now filament loading can be a bit tough and a bit annoying. Um, sometimes the filament just won't go in the hole. So I end up needing to double cut the angle on the end of the filament. So instead of a single cut, you kind of got to give it a good taper on each side. All right, Z offset. This is a pain point and it's something that could be so much better. The default calibration for me is just a tad bit high for Z offset and I needed to adjust it after the print starts and I had to do it by about a half a millimeter. It doesn't appear to save the changes for me between power cycles on the machine. So you'll need to make sure that it is correct after starting your prints just to be safe. Now, Sovel is aware of the issues with the Z offset and uh, we've been told that's something that should be fixed and hopefully it's fixed um, in the machines that you get. And it's nothing serious, right? So it's just software, firmware, pretty easy. Now, bed adhesion on this machine is not the best. It's not the worst, but it's not the best. I'm not exactly sure why, but I have a stack of filled prints that all had to do with bed adhesion on clean build plates. I washed and scrubbed the build plates several times, but ultimately I settled on TH3D's bed cement right here, not sponsored. Uh, they sent this over months ago and uh, it worked out really, really, really well. I just put a thin coat all over the whole build plate and everything stuck. So I'll have links on the screen and in the description, you should go check it out. Um, also, really quickly, let me read you what it's formulated for. Uh, it says, formulated for PLA, PTG, ABS, ASA, nylon, PC, TPU, carbon fiber, glass fiber. Works with all major filament types used in FDM printing. Okay, I know a lot of you are dying to know what the price is. So here it is. Sovel isn't messing around. Early pricing for the SV-8 is, wait for it, $499. Oh my gosh, uh, it's absolutely unbelievable. Um, I'm not sure how they can actually produce a machine like this under 500, but here we are. Now with boron kits, anywhere from 800 to 2000, and with some, you still need to add printed parts and electronics, and that doesn't even take into account your time for assembly and tuning. 499, I think is a game changer for this industry, and it's gonna be a very popular machine for a long time coming. All right, print quality. So now you've seen all the features, you've seen the price, you've heard some good, you've heard some bad, but how does it print? Well, everything covered up to this point is meaningless if the machine doesn't deliver on print quality, right? That, that's the way it goes. Well, it's sort of true and it's sort of not true. My machine has been printing great, but also keep in mind that this machine being a Voron is infinitely upgradable and tunable, meaning that regardless of how my prints turn out, which I think they turned out great, they can get a heck of a lot better. And it really determines on how far you want to push or how hard you want to push this printer because of the platform that it's built on. Now, my first prints were printed at relatively average speeds of about 150 to 200 millimeters per second, but I was catching what I thought was like slight hints of ringing. So I turned up the speed a little, not too much. And immediately I was met with the obvious ringing that I had suspected earlier. Um, what I did is a quick tighten of the belts. Um, it's easy, two bolts right here on the front, and then you can tighten those belts up. And the moment I did that, everything on this machine just got better. Um, I could crank the speeds up to three, 400 plus millimeters per second, and the prints came out so, so clean. Super impressed. It prints a 12 minute Benchy that is nearly perfect. Um, in fact, we did that live on our Twitch stream with a filament that I had never even tested before, and it was super impressive to watch. Everyone was impressed. Speaking of which, you should go follow us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Moses. We're live three times a week. Go over there, do it. We give away filament and printers all the time. 
go. I put several spools of filament through this machine and other than the adhesion issues that we talked about earlier, it's been super reliable. One of the failed prints that I really wish hadn't have failed was the milk crate back here behind me. And that was printed in Matter Hackers Thrifty PLA Plus. Thank you, Matter Hackers, for sending that over to us, by the way. I have their link on the screen in the description below. Really great kind of budget-friendly filament. Um, but it was bed adhesion that caused it to fail. It ended up lifting in that back corner, and uh, I was so upset because it's kind of a cool print, and it really shows off the cooling. Um, but ultimately, this is 3D printing, right? So failures happen. It's part of the industry. But outside of that, it's a very impressive machine, and I really wish that I had used that TH3D bed cement kind of before I started that print. I had the option of doing it, and I didn't, and well, I wasted a whole spool of filament. Now this is the print that I am super excited to show you. First, I ended up printing a small one, regular size, and this was printed in that same Thrifty Make PLA Plus red from Matter Hackers. Um, then I turned it up to 333 percent and look at this awesomeness here just killer this is a battleship benchy 333 percent battleship benchy just killer and i hope you're seeing some b-roll of this it's fantastic on the little one here the turrets turn right but i just don't have the guts on this big one to try and turn the turrets I really am kind of afraid that if I crank those, they're just going to snap. And that is just such a beautiful print. I don't, I don't want to ruin it. Um, it's printed in this Sobel Forest Series PLA Silk Rainbow. And uh, yeah, it took about seven hours or so to print. So, I mean, it's fast. Not, not super fast for that print. But ultimately, I think the print turned out amazing. I love it. It's pretty nice. Okay, who is this machine for? Okay, if you are one of the hardcore tinker types, then this is a solid established machine that you can just go crazy on with infinite upgrades and modifications. You already know what it's capable of, have at it, go get it. Now, if you're brand new to 3D printing and it was the size and the speed and the price that caught your attention, then I don't think that you'll be overwhelmed or disappointed in this particular machine. Um, I think it's gonna work out of the box for you and it gives you unlimited room to learn and expand your 3D printing knowledge. Okay, now it's time for my recommendation. But before I give you that, let me give a huge shout out and uh, thank you to our YouTube members and our Patreon supporters. You are literally what make this content possible. So I couldn't do it without you. We are full-time content creators and if you'd like to support us, we would love to have that support. You can click the little join button there uh, below the video and you can also click in the description and head over to our Patreon and support us there. We'd appreciate it and thank you. Okay, here's the recommendation. If you receive the same machine that I have on my bench or an updated one that addresses the minor concerns I had, I am super confident that you will be happy with this machine. But as always, I highly recommend watching as much content on any new machine as possible so that you can make a fully informed decision. But if you decide to buy, I'll have links in the description and uh, on the screen. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Go. If you want one, go get it. Don't wait. $4.99. It's crazy.